Welcome back, everyone. It's Friday morning, and we are here to answer your questions. We have Karen, of course, and we have a special guest, uh, Tim Payne, who is basically a, an amazing hero. Um, he, he stopped over just to say hi, and we pulled him in, and uh, he's from South North Carolina, right? Yeah, North Carolina. So this guy, and we're, I'm going to do a separate video right after we're done here because it's just, his story is incredible, but he was um, in, I think, Iraq, and you uh, stepped on a... Uh, IED, right? Afghanistan. It's Afghanistan. 2011. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, he, he's double amputee, he lost both of his legs and I think some fingers and quite uh, traumatic, uh, but he has an incredible story that I want to talk about in the next show that I'm, we're going to do that you're not going to see probably till Monday or Tuesday. But uh, appreciate you being here. Oh, thanks. And uh, um, one of the things that uh, he he did. He actually did keto. Yeah, he just started keto. He's watching my videos, and uh, so we'll have to pick his brain on that as well. Um, but I think we we have some. I think the the big thing uh, that the overriding story, the thing we have in common, which is like really really important. You like GI Joes as a kid, didn't you? Always loved GI Joes. Oh my gosh! No, it's so half the battle. So I just battle. I was in the backyard <laughs> for hours playing with GI Joes, and until I got you know married, and then. About it, he oh, still man. talks about. Oh his yeah, that was. Now. Yeah, it's incredible. You so, can't find them anymore. No, you can't. Yeah, you have to go Especially to the, the state, authentic, so. the the good ones. So, mm -hmm. wonderful. So, thank you for being here. Yeah, yeah. the honor, yeah. pleasure. Thank you so much. And I was telling, uh, it's way more amazing meeting you as opposed to like, shh, don't tell anybody, Prince Harry. <laughs> <It's> amazing. <gasps> Listen, here's it's that awesome, twenty dollars. That. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> right away. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. T Tim, just to, just as a side note, um, you, what prompted you just to, um, you know, search out some help with um, your uh, with keto or you know videos like just in a thumbnail sketch. Just what, how did that come about? Um, okay, so I joined the military to fight the the war. It was a physical war. I didn't know that I was going to be fighting the mental war and then mm -hmm. uh, the ongoing like spiritual war. Just keep on going. Mm -hmm. So my inspiration just came from. Uh, being addicted to all these medications, and then uh, started eating more healthy and uh, clearing my mind because my mind was completely clouded for so wow. long. I forgot who I was, and, but it was a really long battle. Wow. So then you, uh, I guess you were searching on some YouTube stuff, and then you saw a couple of videos that I did, right? Oh, yeah. I've been watching uh, videos on health and fitness for years. I mean, I, was, I spent 11 years in the Army, always uh, reading magazines, and then uh, that's when... You know, social media and more marketing is like easier to find on online. And uh, yes, YouTube's great. Saw your videos, like boom, instantly watching you. And there's another guy named Thomas DeLauer who's like really mm -hmm. great stuff too. So it's mm -hmm. like between you two. Like, oh, that's great. Yeah. And then you uh, you saw this thing with keto and you started it. And um, you did a little intermittent fasting as well, right? Right. I do intermittent fasting now. So I go about 18 hours of fasting and then I'll eat for about six. Um, and I was doing keto really good last year, but then the holidays were like, okay, impossible. Right. It's impossible. Uh, but this year I've managed to fight through the holidays and I've still maintained. But it was about it was about six months to get back into keto from wow. uh, the last time. It was hard to get back into it. Well, one thing I'll bring up on the next show is that you, uh, you I mean, this guy's like a, a professional athlete. I mean, you took uh, some serious... Um, Awards are actually medals, even a gold medal in, in Warrior Games. So it was uh, six gold medals at the Warrior Games back in 2016. <laughs> one bronze medal. Wow. Oh my gosh. Two two gold, one silver, and two bronze at the Invictus Games, and I just got I only got one medal at the Australian Invictus Games back in uh, October, November. Oh my gosh. So and then you is part of that just swimming, right? Yeah, swimming. Mm -hmm. So this is all massively upper body. You don't get the help of your lower legs. <laughs> You're like yeah. My, my recovery came from swimming. Like, all I did was oh. swimming. So I was fighting through medication addiction. Mm. I had a falling out with my medical team. And I was like, I'm just going to do this on my own. And I was just thinking the quickest way to get all these medications out of my body is to do cardiovascular fitness and to start eating clean. And then that's when I just started educating myself and just doing PT all the time. Wow, fascinating. Wow. Well, guys, we're going to talk more about that because um, there, also you found that performance uh, kind of dipped down with keto possibly right we'll talk right. about that and try to debug that well thank you all right so um i tell you what let's just jump right to marie she's been uh, waiting for 32 minutes and 55 seconds so hey marie are you there hi i am good morning dr Burke. good morning 
Good morning, Kim, and special guest Tim. Um, so, Dr. Berg, uh, two quick questions. Yeah. Um, can, is it okay to make the wheatgrass juice powder at night but not drink it until the morning, you know, 12 hours mm. later? And, <clears throat> and I've also, I have a chronic excessive blushing issue. We've t- I've seen your autonomic nervous system videos. We talked about the adrenal massage tool. I'm taking the adrenal cortisol, and I'm just not seeing any results. Is it just I'm on OMAD? I sleep about six and a half to seven hours. Um, the only odd thing I do is I eat sunflower seeds throughout the day, the shells, so it takes me like a year to eat like half a cup. I mean, am I just basically stuck with this? Well, I don't know. I think the, the blushing thing um, is definitely part of the flight or fight mechanism, and that does take some time. Um, the other thing that you might want to work on is your gut health, which does take time. Um, and just keep chipping away at that. But the, as far as the wheatgrass juice powder, it's, uh, it is kind of magically sustained in this uh, form, this inactive powder dry form. So when you add water, you activate the enzymes. So if you were going to consume it in the morning, I would not add water in at night because you are going to kind of cause a uh, kind of a degrading of those enzymes. And then when you consume it in the morning, it's not as fresh. Uh, I would just bite the bullet. Mix water in the morning, drink it right before you consume it because as soon as you add water, you activate the enzymes that are in storage mode. And that's what can, you know, being exposed to air can actually degrade some of the nutrients. Cool. Thanks so much, Marie. Appreciate your your question. And now let's go to Ruth from Texas. Uh, Hi, Ruth. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm hey. sorry. I had to. <laughs> Are you eating? <laughs> no, I had, I had muted it so that way you couldn't hear me, but I'm here. <laughs> um, we talked last week about me having a urinalysis and there being high protein and albumin in yeah. the results mm-hmm. and it affecting me being able to get insurance. And I, what I meant to ask you was if I fast before taking that urine test again, do you think that would help to, mm. because I'm not really worried about it. I just need it to be low so I can get a good rate on my insurance. Okay, good. So I, I don't eat a lot of protein. So okay. like I said, I'm not sure what it is. I'm, I'm one meal a day. Yeah. I drink uh, a whole pitcher full of a uh, green drink every day. I eat vegetables. The only thing I eat a lot of is pecans. Yeah. But other than that, um, I, I, it's just vegetables, meat. I've increased my water. I've been drinking more of the apple cider vinegar. I've added, I started taking the, um, the, the wheatgrass powder juice again. I had stopped for a while because like I said, I was drinking a whole two quart pitcher of, of green drink. I mean, that's mm-hmm. seven to 10 cups of vegetables. I didn't think I, I needed any more. Okay, so let's, um, just, let's just cover that, Ruth, because um, there's a couple points. I think that, uh, yes, you need to fast before you evaluate, anyone evaluates any, like either blood or urine. Um, and as a special note, you always want to fast like 12 hours or more, not less than that. So that you'll get a more accurate uh, reading, especially if you're also evaluating blood and lipid, lipids and things like that. But yes, do that. Um, the wheatgrass juice powder is just, is one of the most amazing things to, to kind of um, handle any anything that's going on with maybe like some oxidation in the in the in the kidney and the liver. So I think that will probably handle it, but then recheck it, and I I, I think that's going to not be an issue anymore. So go ahead and do that, Ruth, and then call call us back and just tell us if uh, if that clears out of your urine. All right, see you later. All right, Karen, do we have any good questions coming up? Oh, yeah. First of all, Tim doesn't have, Tim can't hear the questions. Okay, I'll repeat them. It's okay. But uh, everyone is saying thank you for your service. Oh, yeah, thanks. They respect you and they appreciate you. Yeah. And God bless you. And awesome, you. man. Yeah. God bless America. That's, that's right. That's the best thing, right? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Wouldn't want to yeah. be anywhere else. It's an honor to fight for everybody, so it's great. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Okay. So, and hello to everyone in Pakistan and, uh, uh, Texas and all over the United States and Kenosha. 
What? Someone, Kenosha, Darren, Wisconsin. is watching from Kenosha. That's wow, where Dr. Berg is that from. is huge. Can you believe people in Kenosha are actually watching videos? This is exciting. Just this is a kidding. New thing. We get a lot of Wisconsin people, but Darren asks, um, he's concerned about his adrenal mm -hmm. health because he's not sleeping. Okay. So what does he have, what does he tackle first? How does he do it? Okay. And then we'll come back because you know where he's from. No. Buffalo. Is right. I went to UB. What? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, Such where a it small snows world. up. I know. It snows up. That's crazy. So so let's talk about the adrenal. I'm sure that you um, you probably watched some videos. There's a really good video to watch on the adrenal to help you sleep. And it's called the it's a webinar on stress. If you watch that, I actually show you some techniques that you can manually uh, manipulate the adrenal acupressure points. And I know it sounds kind of well, maybe it might sound newer different, but it really does work. Uh, in fact, when I had a sleeping problem, there was nights I'd even sleep one minute, and I'm talking like not even one minute. I would stay, I, I just could not fall asleep. As Karen was sawing logs, I was just laying there going, oh my gosh, I can't go to sleep. So I, I developed it out of the necessity to sleep, and I started to work on the acupressure points to the adrenal, and I'll never forget it. Just I did it, put me to sleep, and I've never had a sleeping problem ever since. So watch that video. There's five different uh, procedures that you can do, and it will help your sleep. You have to search it out on, on YouTube. All right. Okay, good. Well, I just wanted, because I gave a little shout out before now, we're getting it. Scotland, Italy, the UK, India, Mexico, um, Tunisia. Wow. Uh, all over the place. I'm sure people, will, oh, Alaska, I'm sure you'll keep Typing in and welcome everybody. This is awesome. That's great. Well, I'll tell yeah. you what, as you're finding a question, yeah, I need fine. to go to Jody from Sorry. Boston. Hey, Jody. Hi, good morning, Dr. Berg. Good morning. We love Boston. Oh, I do too. It's too cold, Boston but yeah. Strong. Austin strong. Okay. Austin strong. So, um, I have this um, background thought about autophagy mm -hmm. that bothers me. Yeah. <laughs> And I hope you can give me some perspective. Okay. Um, I had a tubal ligation done more than a year ago. Mm -hmm. So um, when I think of long fasts and the awesome effects of autophagy, mm -hmm. I also worry if um, it can reverse the ligation, you know, mm -hmm. rechannelize the tubes. So do you think that's something that could happen? Okay, so uh, Jody wants to know she had a tubal ligation. Okay, so that's uh, they basically... Um, you know, did that to prevent having another baby. So you have the fallopian tubes sitting there, and they were um, now they're now no longer have a tube to connect between the ovary and the uterus. So uh, she wanted to know if, if autophagy, since that's a regenerative type thing, will that uh, fix that problem? And now she's going to become fertile, and then she's concerned about having any more kids because she already had five, and she doesn't want any more. I'm just being sarcastic. No, she doesn't have five. Um, the Here's the thing, autophagy won't actually regrow back those tubes or um, reverse that at all. It's going to basically take probably some of the scar tissue out. It's going to take some of the inflammation out, but you're not going to regrow anything. Um, but autophagy, for those of you that are not, don't know what this is, it's, um, it comes from the Latin word, which means self-eat. Your body is eating itself, but it, when you actually go in a fast, when you hit like 18 hours, and sometimes between 16 and 18 hours, you, your body goes into this self-cleaning mode where it starts eating up all the damaged proteins that occur from you know, the stress of the day and chemicals. So it, it's the best thing for anti-aging. It's good for skin, good for your heart, good to repair inflammatory conditions. And it actually cleans up stuff like um, viruses, bacteria, fungus, candida. It'll clean all that stuff up. That's one of the benefits of autophagy. You actually get younger and um, you have less uh, damaged um, proteins. So, all right, Jody, thanks for your question. Hey, Linda, how, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, how are you? I am. Thank you for helping me, too, because I have lost 27 pounds. You lost 27 wow, awesome. pounds. 27 down. Ding, 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 ding. Awesome. Ding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thanks. You got Thanks, the bell. <laughs> um, oh, I have been on oh, hydrochloric iodine since 1986. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
Okay. I've been on hydrochlorothiazide since 1986 because of fluid retention. Mm -hmm. And um, it was making my blood pressure high. But my blood pressure is very controlled. I stopped taking it. uh, Then, you know, I started getting retention again. So I had to keep taking it. So eventually I started taking half which means it's 12.5. Mm-hmm. And so my doctor, because I was t- telling her that even I was taking an over-the-counter potassium, it was still making me have muscle spasms whenever I traveled. Mm. So uh, so she changed it to a HCTZ slash T-R-I-M mm. something or another, and I can't even think of the name of it. Okay. So with that, I'm sorry? Okay. No, I just thought that was funny. Uh, okay. So I'm still taking only half, and I take like, Every other day. Yeah. I want to get off of this stuff. Is there any way to get off of, um, because I'm taking the ACV, I mean, the apple cider vinegar and the uh, lemon water. Okay. And even every other day with the hydrochlorothiazide, it's causing me, you know, like the second day, by the third day, I'm retaining fluid again. Yeah. Well, okay. First of all, first thing I want to say is that anything that we suggest is not meant to Mm -hmm. diagnose you or provide uh, you know, supplant a medical treatment or your doctor. This is just information to do your own research. So that being said, what can you do to improve blood pressure? <clears throat> You're taking a diuretic, and one of the side effects, by the way, is insulin resistance and a depletion of potassium, but they gave you a, a different version of that. That may be a potassium sparer. I'm not sure. But there's a couple things you want to do before you start to take <clears throat> nutrition, and I think you're already doing that, but... You want to implement basic, healthy version of ketosis and intermittent fasting, hardcore, consistently for a period of time, and then see if you can get the change. There's a couple other things that you you want you can add to it, vitamin K2, but I would go to the doc and ask them for a CAC test. It's a coronary artery calcium score testing. That will really tell, tell you what's going on because if your arteries are hardened with calcium, then that... If, and, it's not just your blood pressure is not going to go away overnight. It's going to take months, maybe even years, because it's calcified. Um, but if it's clean with, with the calcium and, the, and you still have elasticity in there, then it's a, just a matter of really beefing up, no pun intended, your potassium reserve and your other electrolytes, magnesium, from these things called vegetables, like the green stuff, like lots of, lots of that. That's going to actually give you the electrolytes that you can... Um, start to help yourself. There's other things, too, that will help blood pressure. Um, EDTA, I think I did a video on that. Mm -hmm. Um, So go ahead and try those and uh, see if it doesn't help you. All right. Linda, thanks for your call. Okay, Karen, over to you. Okay, good. Yeah, so it came pouring in, so I have to read these out. They're counting on me. Netherlands, Taiwan, Sweden, Germany, the Sudan, Ecuador, Australia, Ghana. Wow. Uh, Ghana, wow. Norway, and on and on. Welcome. Thanks for watching. We love you guys. Okay. And Tim loves you guys. Oh, yeah. That's so exciting. <laughs> so exciting. Okay. So I have a question you're going to dig. Go ahead. Okay. Hope it's easy. It is. Okay, good. Can you use keto and intermittent fasting to cut weight for boxing? You used to have to cut weight all the time. Didn't yeah. So, um, that it is the best thing to cut weight. I mean, if you do it healthily. I was in wrestling and, um, and also in college, and I had to cut weight. And I, there was like, I did it all incorrect, like three days of eating nothing and just starving myself and then pigging out and then wrestling. So, um, yeah, for boxing, any sport, if you want to cut weight, do he- the healthy version of keto um, and intermittent fasting. You're going you're gonna to get real lean if you do that. Um, if you want to lose a little more weight in a pinch, you want to cut your carbs. That's the main thing that you want to cut. So if you bring your carbs down to zero, you'll, you'll lose the most weight. And of course, you probably don't want to go crazy with you know, frequent eating. So if you have cut down the frequency and then the carbs, that's really the two most important things. I mean, it's kind of interesting in sports, right? Because the, this conversation of I have to cut weight to compete versus getting into some optimal weight where you're going to be performing oh, there's at, to do on a regular that. basis. So the, in boxing and wrestling, they're always like, I got to cut weight. Why, why aren't they just achieving that performance weight? Because they have weight classes that you have to fit into, and then you have to, 
they have different divisions, and yeah, you don't want to have someone like cheating. like if I'm if I'm wrestling someone that over yeah. two hundred pounds yeah. and I'm like one seventy five, that's not fair. Yeah, but so you you weigh in at a certain weight, mm -hmm. which is lower than your natural weight. A little bit, at least. Right. So my question is, why wouldn't you just strive to be at that weight, that performance weight? You can do that too, Karen. <laughs> I didn't get an adequate answer. <laughs> okay. So there you have it. So I think that's actually a, a Tim question. Tim? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, how, okay. Well, my experience doing keto is that when, because for boxing, that's high intensity. You are doing super high intensity. So I would say keto would kind of, it would burn me out at least, because I, I would burn way too much energy. I need more carbs mm -hmm. in, that, in that aspect. So, but clean carbs on that on that side. So one thing I found with my uh, competitions is that my energy level went kind of down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as like sustaining energy and just going for long periods of time, it's like it's unstoppable. I guess. On I don't, keto. I, yeah, on keto it's like a smooth burn. But when I was doing other stuff with just high intensity training and just eating a lot, it's like I'd have these spikes. It's like that uh, that sugar high. It's like the glucose high, and then it's mm -hmm. like the low. So you have these highs and lows all day long. And we're going to cover that a lot more in the next video that you're not going to be able to see until Monday. But there's, oh. a, there's a real good, there's some interesting data on, you know, high intense, the exercise versus endurance exercise. Like uh, the guy who I had on my show, he, he took the record in the U.S. for uh, running 100 miles, uh, 11 hours. So um, he's a keto guy. You know, that's a lot different than doing some high intensity stuff. So yeah. we'll talk about that. Okay, good. Yeah. So... How can people do keto on a low income? Well, I think you're going to have to, I think fasting. the best suggestion is to get a better job and make a little more money so you can <laughs> increase the quality of food because yeah. you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because you can go to a fast food place and get some cheap food, but then you're defeating the whole purpose. Uh, but there is ways that you can do it, like um, eggs, for example. I mean, eggs are, maybe it's like $5 a dozen. You can... That's, that's not bad of a protein source, right? Yeah, you can eat for a week. Yeah. Five bucks. So. Lettuce, but vegetables. Here, it's really here, nice. Here's the other point. Like you're doing intermittent fasting. You're, you're only eating one or two meals a day. Right there, I just saved you like $600 on your food bill. <laughs> so. <laughs> you're welcome. I got the applause going. Okay, okay good. good. All right, take a call. Okay, Janine, are you there? Janine. Janine, Janine. how are you? Oh, you're from God. Florida. Yes. Go ahead. You Thank you so much, Dr. Berg, for You're all welcome. you do and for taking my call and Karen, too. You're welcome. My niece's five-year-old son has catonic hypoglycemia, and his doctor has him at every single meal doing a quick carb, which would be brown rice, quinoa, or any other whole grain, mm -hmm. and a slow carb of fruits or a very sugary veggie such as carrots or peas. Right. Um, is this a good idea? <laughs> Yeah, here's my viewpoint. So, uh, Janine, Jeannie, right? Yeah, Jeannie. Jeannie, yeah. Okay. So, Jeannie asked a question um, about hypoglycemia, and uh, the doctor's recommending um, carbs. Carbs, Basically. frequent meals, fruit, probably, rice, to starch. fruit. Yeah, so fast carbs and slow carbs. Listen, here's the thing w what is hypoglycemia? It's a low blood sugar situation. Now, you might think that, oh, I'll just eat carbs oh. to raise the sugar. Yeah, but what you're forgetting is insulin's going to come in there. It's going to spike. Now you're going to end up with low blood sugar even more because you're spiking insulin. The, the secret of fixing hypoglycemia is understanding insulin and avoiding the insulin spike. So cutting out the carbs will ultimately correct hypoglycemia. But you have to, it, takes, it takes a couple weeks to adapt because you want to run on fat. When you're running on fat, you don't have the highs and lows anymore. So the worst food you can consume for hypoglycemia reactions is basically carbs. It's just, it's crazy. So you don't even want to do, if you have hypoglycemia, you don't want to do potatoes. You don't want to do any, uh, any major carbs at all. So, and it can be corrected. I had hypoglycemia when I was 11 years old. So I fully fixed it. So, you, you know, you can too. All right. Thanks for your question. Now we're going to go to, do you have a question? Oh, but Jonathan Perry lost 41 pounds. All right, Woo! Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Okay, good. Hey, Rhonda, 
You're from the Ozarks, Missouri. How are you? I'm great. Hi, Dr. Berg and Karen. Hi. I've been forgetting to tell you that I have lost a total of 75 pounds. You lost, lost 75 pounds. pounds. Woo! This is like, man, you guys are... <laughs> the bell and applause. That is incredible. That is so yep. well done. <laughs> My question is actually pretty simple. Um, I've seen that diarrhea a lot, and I was wanting to know, is that really a, a big concern? I constantly put in the electrolytes, and seems to be from green drinks and electrolytes like magnesium. Is that a huge yeah. concern? Is there a danger with diarrhea? Okay, so uh, Ron had a question about diarrhea. If you have diarrhea, is it dangerous? Am I concerned about it? It, it is a situation because when you have diarrhea, you're going to lose a lot of electrolytes. You're going to lose um, maybe even your acids. It's going to throw off your pH. So it's okay like short term, but long term, it could throw your body out of whack. So um, you're going to have to really track what you're consuming. You mentioned magnesium. Um, there's certain minerals that just will create a laxative effect, and you're just going to have to avoid those foods. Um, but we want to get you in a state where you don't have that. Um, one of the good things about adding a probiotic is that will also help. Um, and then adjusting your vegetables. Some people get diarrhea with too many vegetables, some people not enough. So you're going to have to just keep tweaking your diet until it is handled. Cool. All right. So now we're going to go to Loretta from South Dakota. Good morning, Good Dr. Morning. Berg. Thank you very much for taking my call. You're welcome. I'm calling in, in regards to my husband. Uh, he's not overweight. Overly overweight. He's six one. He weighs about two hundred and twenty one pounds. Okay. I put him on intermittent fasting and keto um, because he's pre diabetic. He has severe high blood pressure and mm -hmm. currently is having a severe gout attack. Okay. And the doctor put him on prednisone for a week. Right. That just caused him to be aggressive and to increase his high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So because of these three things that we're juggling, it's very difficult to figure out if um, some of the things like cherry juice would be good for his mm. gout and right. prediabetes. Right. Would that cause his prediabetes to be worse? Okay. Uh, currently, I have him on Hawthorne for his high blood pressure, cherry um, celery juice mm -hmm. that I make every day, and celery seed extract, mm -hmm. and... Uh, and uh, I mean cherry seed extract and celery seed. So I'm just wondering mainly about the cherry juice, if that would cause his prediabetes to be worse. Right. I have a question. Did you say he's on keto or not? Uh, yes, I just put him on keto. And I, I speak this way because we've been married 32 years. So, yes, I put him on keto and intermittent fasting. Go, girl. Okay. So, Loretta, here's the, que here's the thing. Um, your husband has severe gout, diabetes, high blood pressure, and a bunch of other issues. He just started keto. You want to know, should we put him on cherry juice? You're doing um, uh, celery right now. I think all the remedies um, are going to be have a very small impact uh, right now because his insulin is just way too high. Because um, that's, that's really what's behind those. I mean, you really have one problem that's causing blood pressure, gout, and weight conditions and diabetes. It's one condition. It's like it's a high insulin situation and insulin resistance. It causes, that's what's causing it. So uh, the cherry juice actually won't even create a dent because you're going to add the sugar and there's, it doesn't lower our insulin. So that's going to, so that's the real question. How are we going to lower insulin? Well, he needs to do the healthy version of keto, put him on it. Uh, he doesn't have an option. It's just mandatory. And then do uh, intermittent fasting as his hunger goes away. Just gradually put him on that. So if he, was, if he can get on one meal a day, I don't even care how big it is, and he can do healthy keto, uh, watch what happens to these conditions. Way more than giving him some remedy or a pill, that stuff is secondary. Get the basics in, give it some, a little time, and his blood sugars will do better, and then get with your, his doctor to actually reduce the meds because he's not going to need as much. Um, the gout... Is the side effect of that, you know, he, he can also do uh, potassium citrate. That's a good remedy for gout. It just will handle it pretty fast. And um, probably those electrolytes would be helpful as well for the blood pressure situation. So why don't you do that and um, not go in the direction of 
cherry juice. All right, Loretta, thank you for calling. Okay, so, hey, Mike, are you there? Yes. Hey, you're from Washington, D.C., right down the street. Yes, thank you, uh, Dr. Berg. And Tim, thank you for your service. Thank you. Um, Dr. Berg, I'm a part of a Facebook um, keto group, and one of the members actually had a question. Um, she says that her daughter started keto on the first of the year, and she's a new mother, and now um, her breast milk has decreased, and she's looking for some suggestions to help her. Okay, so the good question about uh, keto for new mothers, the breast milk has decreased. Um, one way to increase the production of breast milk is you can either do brewer's yeast or nutritional yeast. It just eat, She needs more B vitamins. Um, there's, there's many other things too, like higher fat foods um, would be really good, um, like healthy, like cod liver oil, and you can get them in tablets. That would be very beneficial. Um, but, you know, typically when you do keto, and you can do keto for a new mother, but you just have to make sure you probably don't add a lot of intermittent fasting in there because you want to fortify her a bit more. But the key is the nutritional yeast. It's the B vitamins that will help the production. There's other things too, but that would be the most important thing. Awesome. Thanks for calling. Okay, Joe, you're from Louisiana. Are you there? Hey, Dr. Berg. How are you? Good. What part of Louisiana are you from? New Orleans area. Oh, okay. So they have New Orleans. So they... I heard they have some, a bit of uh, good food there. Yeah, slightly. Yeah, slightly. <laughs> not keto friendly though. Uh, it's not right. keto friendly, I know. So your calcium score, uh, it's a little high. Yeah, I've, I've been on keto a little over a year and uh, I met you and your wife at the keto summit in DC. Oh, great. great. And yeah, my calcium score came back at 720 mm -hmm. and because my LDL is 195 my doctor the cardiologist is kind of pushing me to encourage me to get an angiogram mm -hmm. which I'm not too thrilled about yeah okay a couple things Joe um, Joe has a score of a calcium score which is a coronary artery calcium test that should be zero at 720 it is way too high, and the, the danger of that is just the uh, arteries become calcified, so that creates an issue. So how do we bring that down? And then you also, your LDL was high. Um, doctor wants to do, do some deeper testing on that. Okay, so here's a couple things. Um, ultimately, at this point, um, there is no option for cheating or other than doing it exactly by the book healthy keto and uh, major intermittent fasting to start to reverse this. And then what you do is you get another test in six weeks and see if it's coming down. It should start coming down. And if you're going in the right direction, then you just keep going. You know, that's what I would do. I would wait six weeks, get another test. Oh, it's improving. So keep going and, um, and stick to it consistently. One thing that people don't realize, they do keto and they do go off. And um, there's a guy by the name of uh, Dave... Feldman, he did, he's like a human guinea pig. He went off keto for, I think, six weeks, and he measured his coronary arteries. <laughs> they, got, they got big. I mean, they just clogged those things right up within just going off keto in six weeks. So just for those people who go off and have a, have a hard time getting back on, just realize what's happening to the inside of your body. You want to, you know, you don't see it, but it's happening. Now, as far as to decalcify that artery, there's a good product, it's called EDTA, it's a chelator. So you take that, I would probably also do something called uh, IP6, it's a type of a inositol and phytic acid combined and it'll help you to um, chelate or pull out uh, the heavy metals or any other minerals, e even iron and then calcium as well. So I would do those two, uh, I would do wheatgrass juice powder just to kind of give you all, supply all the antioxidants and then just, um, reevaluate. Um, I think you're up against chronic uh, diet problems from living in Louisiana so long. That is the problem. You need to move to somewhere like Nebraska or somewhere where they have really good food all year round. Okay, and you're not tempted. And I'm being sarcastic. Mm -hmm. So um, try that, Joe, and then call us back. Let us know what happens. Okay, Karen. Okay. Do you have a question? I do. Go ahead. So, we get this every week, what would you do about 
a lot of vegetables and bloating. Mm-hmm. Yep. And if somebody takes them out of their diet, adding them back in, how would you do that? Yeah. So, so the whole the thing with the bloating is some people don't have the enzymes to break down the fiber. They may have another condition called <clears throat> SIBO, S-I-B-O. And that has to do with bacteria that should be in the large gut. It's in the small gut. And if you add fiber, you're going to feed it and make it worse. So um, what you want to do for one month is you want to cut out the vegetables. You want to just cut that way down, um, even go kind of carnivore for a bit, and then slowly reintroduce them with maybe some cooked, steamed vegetables or fermented. And you slowly, gradually introduce those because you're your body just doesn't have the enzymes or because the microbes aren't there or you have too much microbes. So, yeah, that's that's probably the exception to eating vegetables. You don't want to do it if you're getting too much bloating or gas. Mm -hmm. Now, also, there's al yeah. alternate sweeteners can cause that. Yeah, like um, uh, erythritol, xylitol, maltitol, inulin, which is a fiber. And what happens, I'm going to do a video on this, it tends to retain fluid. So you may even consume that gain four pounds, it's not fat, it's water. So unfortunately, these fibers and sugar alcohols do re cause you to retain some water. Now, I did a little experiment on that. Karen right? did an experiment and she took a probiotic. Right. And that Dr. seemed Burke's to help probiotic. it. That helped it. It prevented it because I'm sensitive to certain uh, non-sugar sweeteners. She's talking about sugar alcohols. Sugar alcohols. Yeah. Okay and they make me bloated and very uncomfortable. Some people get severe cramping and other people mm -hmm. aren't affected at all. Right. But I took the probiotic at the same time. This is no gonna be a good experiment to figure symptoms. this out. Absolutely no symptoms. So that's, that's good. my secret weapon. Here. Okay, well, we'll have to see if that we can reproduce that with other people. Hey, Eric, I like your name and you're from Wisconsin. I like where you're from. How are you? <laughs> hey, Dr. Berg, Tim and Karen. Hey. I'm doing really well. Uh, say, uh, I've been doing your program, Dr. Berg, since uh, January of last year. I'm down 125 pounds to down date. 120 down 125 pounds. 125 pounds? That is a well, whole body. I'm a huge... Uh, thanks. Thank you. Um, I, I feel like a new guy, even though I've got... A lot more to go. I started out at 468. I'm down to 343. Wow. Um, but I'm in pants for the first time since 2012. Wow. wow. Good job. Yeah. Uh, anyway, my question to you, Dr. Berg, is I've been I've been using your electrolyte powder, yeah. your raw wheat grass juice, and your nutritional yeast this past year. Um, and I do OMAD, one meal a day. Wow. And my question to you is, uh, I take it three times. I take your your uh, nutritional yeast, the wheatgrass juice, and um, the electrolyte powder three times a day. Um, and then I also do two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. and uh, the two tablespoons of the lemon juice that you recommend. Um, am I getting the full benefits of, and I might not be saying this right, but atrophy? Uh, you know, the fasting, am I getting the full benefits by, you know, br I, I'm assuming I'm breaking my fast three times a day with oh, this. Um, is, is it really, am I breaking it a lot or, you know, I guess I've it's always been a question in my mind whether I'm getting the full benefits Good question. Uh, that I could be getting. So um, let me ask you this. When you're, it's about time to eat that one meal a day, are you actually hungry or not? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, I'm a truck driver. I'm a truck driver, and the one meal a day works really well for me. Um, I, it ends up being a little later in the in the night. Usually, I try to make it no later than eight o'clock, but a lot of times it's seven, uh, eight o'clock. Um, the for the last two months, I have been doing um, the extended fast mm -hmm. uh, once a, once a month. Um, I went as much as five days. Um, yeah, but three to five days once a month is what I've been doing. Okay. And no, uh, to answer your question at night, I, I'm not hungry. Um, it's more of a habit of just when I'm done for the day, I, I cook all my food in my, in my sleeper or my wife makes up my stuff uh, ahead of time. Um, but uh, normally uh, I, I, I really don't get hungry for several days, actually. Okay. And then what, uh, the, the most important question, what part of Wisconsin are you from? 
<laughs> I knew you were going to ask. I'm from southwest Wisconsin, down by Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. I know you <laughs> wanted me to say Green Bay. <laughs> okay. It's a beautiful in the fall there. I will have to say that. All right. Awesome. Yep. So here's the, here's, the, here's the point. You're a truck driver, and you, you still have some weight to lose. You lost a massive amount, and you're doing the nutrition uh, three times a day. Uh, what, what you could do, and no, the nutrition is not going to interfere with your autophagy. It's not going to interfere with your fasting because you're, you're not talking about any significant calories at all. So I wouldn't even change that option. What I would do if I were you, if you want to speed things up, is, is go longer without eating. Like go until you're actually hungry. So maybe you, go, you eat every other day. And the reason I'm saying that is because you are eating when you're not eating. Your body is living off of your own fat. And so might as well ride the wave. As long as you're taking nutrition and you seem to be taking all the right things, ride the wave and just, I mean, the only other thing I would, you could probably add is some cod liver oil just to get your fat soluble vitamins and maybe do that instead of your meal. And, but if you're not hungry, just push longer. You will, you're going to be losing even more weight. Um, but that's what I would do if I were you. Eric, thanks for your call. All right, Karen. Okay. you have a good one? Fermented food. What Benefits of why eat it? <laughs> Fermented food is what's called a prebiotic. And basically it's, a, it's providing fiber for the microbes. Your body doesn't have the enzymes to break down fiber. So you depend on the microbes to do with that. But also the fermented food has a probiotic. So it's a combination of pre and po, uh, pro. So you get these, this friendly bacteria um, that adds the microbes, that's the actual microbes that you can eat. And then the prebiotic, which is the food for the microbes. So you actually kill two birds with one stone. So um, I consume a lot of fermented vegetables. Um, I'm doing more of that nowadays, uh, sauerkraut, and I just, it seems to work. So yeah, I like them. Okay, Victoria, you're from California. You had a question, go ahead. Yes, yes, I have a few issues. I have been on keto for about three months. Mm -hmm. I initially lost 13 pounds. I do two meals a day, um, usually breakfast and lunch, no dinner. Um, I have been having problems with my sleep for like last year. I had major losses in my life. Mm -hmm. And I sleep, I fall asleep okay, but then I sleep for about five and a half hours. And after that, I cannot sleep. Okay. Um, in urination, day and night. The worst thing right now is the heart palpitations. And I do take your electrolyte powder, nutritional yeast, mineral water. Um, I do retain water. And um, I really only, if I eat cooked veggies, I'm okay. If I eat raw, it's not okay. Okay. So in the last one, extremely greasy hair, and I start losing a lot of hair. And I don't have <laughs> much hair to start with. Okay. Do, so, you, yes, drink, do you drink coffee? Cool. No. Okay. No. All right. So um, Victoria has a problem with sleeping. She's, uh, she sleeps for five and a half hours and then just can't, can't sleep more than that. Here's one point about keto. When you do keto, and I don't know if you noticed this, Tim, but did you find that you need a little less sleep? Less sleep. Okay. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. So if you keep doing keto long enough, you won't need any sleep. You can go 24 hours a day and just work around the clock. I'm just kidding. You're going to need some sleep. But um, yeah, I, I, I don't need as much sleep. And that's it could be a good thing, but if you're tired, that's a d different thing. So um, I do know some people that can get by with like five and a half, uh, six hours of sleep, and they do fine. Um, so that could be one thing. The other thing that I wanted to mention is uh, you mentioned about cooked vegetables. You you don't have the heart palpitations with cooked vegetables. So then then cook the vegetables. Don't worry about the raw right now. Um, you could also get the wheatgrass juice powder without the fiber. Um, just to get the nutrition and see if that can supply you. But the cooked vegetables also have nutrition and they also release more phytonutrients, but there are certain vitamins that could be deficient in cooked vegetables. So just steam them and to solve the heart palpitations. I'm, I'm thinking too with heart palpitations, if you're taking a lot of the electrolytes, that will eventually handle that. But the other point is that your digestion, your gallbladder could also cause... Um, problem with the with the uh, the heart palpitations too so I'm just looking at the fat content that could be an issue all right thanks for your call and also 
You guys, um, you can follow Tim Payne online at, it's called chosenleadership.com. And I checked at your website, you have a lot of photos, you have your story, um, and also you can donate to, um, I think you have your donation forms on there? or No, no? It's, no. Uh, there's a book on there uh, about create space is changing everything. So I still published the book, but now it's, they've taken it off, but I gotta figure out how to get it back on there now. Okay. Yeah. So, the, yeah, because there's, and we'll talk about it in the next video, but there's, I think, and I'll put a link down below, there's a, um, you basically um, donate to, it, it's, there's a fund that helps uh, vets, right? So we have, there's a chosen foundation, okay. and uh, what, it, what it is, it's an organization that tries to provide scholarships for our fallen heroes, family members. Oh, wow, okay. That's awesome. That's a great cause. A lot of you guys do donate. You know, might as well donate to something that really makes a difference, and this would be a really great thing. So I, I'm going to put a link down below. So definitely do that. Um, okay, so we, we want to go to Shamike. Shamike? Shamika. Are you there? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I am. It is Shamika. That's okay. Okay. I have a question. Um, thank you. I found you a couple of months ago on Facebook, and I've lost 27 pounds since Ooh, I started. The lost 27 pounds. pounds? Get out of town. Yes, okay. yes, yes. And um, also, it's helping me regulate my blood pressure, and I have more energy, tons of energy. So thanks so much for that. Right. Um, but my question is, is not, it's not really keto-related, so I apologize for the follow listeners. I have a two-year-old who is a very picky, picky toddler. Mm -hmm. Recently, I took him to get... Um, I recently I took him to get his checkup and his white blood cells count was low and they did test on him. And to come to find out is because he's vitamin deficient. Mm -hmm. So now he they have him on um, a different type of pharmaceutical drugs, which I'm not really keen of. I'm like, how is this going to help him become more uh, better with vitamin intake? I don't know. But do you have any suggestions um, concerning that? Like, or do you have anything out there that I can read upon? Because I've been searching on the website. I can't find anything that talks about toddler nutrition. Yeah, okay, this is a really important topic. What do you feed two-year-olds that are picky eaters? Well, the, the other thing too is I'm, I'm guessing when you initially raised him when he was born, you probably were not on keto at that time, is that true? I, no, I just started a couple of months ago. Yeah. No, and, I wasn't. And I was a very, very bad eater. <laughs> well, listen, this is the problem. And then I, I was nursing him on top of that. You're nursing him, yeah, and you were a bad eater. Here's the problem. You're, um, you start them off like that, it's really hard to change it. So your next children that you have, the next three that you're going to have, you need to start them <laughs> off on keto, or at least you on keto, and then make sure that you breastfeed for at least three or four years. Um, I'm being sarcastic again. But here's, here's what you do with your your child, um, you're gonna have to find some um, healthy food that that child will eat. Now, probably there's gonna be junk food, so you're gonna have to start making the little keto bombs, or little cookies without sugar, and have those around the house. And you just can't have any more junk food in the house. There is just nothing that they could eat. And then slowly start to get the blood sugars back, and then you'll see some some shift there, but it's kind of a gradual thing because you can't educate your two-year-old. I mean, like, you're, what are you going to do, start talking about insulin? So you're going to have to just um, punt, and as far as a vitamin goes, for them, for your doctors to give a drug instead of a vitamin, get a, go to the health store and get a whole food, like maybe um, vitamin for kids. There's, there's whole food vitamins. Get that, and they may be sweetened with some type of alternative sweetener that's not sweet. That's what you need to do, a whole food vitamin for kids. Okay? Thanks for your call. All right. Karen, you're looking at a question there. What, what do you want to ask am. me? I am. I'm looking at questions here. You answered a couple of them there. Okay. With the kids. So, here's one. I only have one question. This person only has one question. Right. Ever. I believe that. <laughs> I'm never diabetic. Never. My blood sugar always, always was 84. But after extended fast, 58 hours, keto, and intermittent fasting, it's 105. Mm -hmm. Well, what, ha <clears throat> what happens if you're insulin resistant and um, you do this sometimes, your liver will start making a little more sugar because it's obviously not coming from anything. You're not eating anything. So where does that sugar come from? Your body's making it. It's not a concern. You're still within the range that you should be. Um, 
it's called the Dawn phenomenon. You can look it up, um, where your blood sugars will start kicking in and your liver starts making sugar. Um, and this happens with people that have pre-existing insulin resistance. You're just in a phase where you're adapting and it's going to have to take a little more time. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. You're still well within the normal range. It's not an issue, but your liver is obviously just making a bit more sugar. And it could be also coming from the adrenals because that can also release more adrenaline or, and then it kicks in. But I would not even worry about it. Hey, Michelle, you're from Texas and you lost 102 pounds. Congratulations. Woo! Yeah. Incredible. I, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. Um, yeah, I started the ketogenic diet um, August 13th, and as of today, I was 252 then. As of today, I am 155. 155 wow. from 255. Yeah, I've lost. Should... I've been keto on steroids, so I've done your. You keto did keto, on, keto on steroids. steroids. That's awesome. Yeah, my daughter's getting married in April, and I want to look really good. You you but... got your bikini body. No, not yet. <laughs> I'm, well, she's I'm only like three feet high. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm at a stall right now, but let me just do this really quick. I started out with my sugars in the 400s. Mm -hmm. I was a pre-diabetic. Wow. I was on metformin. I had malignant high blood pressure. My blood pressure is now 119 over 60. I'm on one pressure medicine, doing really well that way. Mm -hmm. um, you answered kind of my question with your last answer. My, um, I do intermittent fasting. I can go three to four days without eating wow. where I'm not hungry. But my sugars have gone up, and you just kind of answered it that maybe I've got the adrenal and an insulin um, resistance problem. So I think that my, because they don't go over like 118, but that's after three to four days of fasting. But my um, ketones, I've got the mojo, mm -hmm. they were staying in the five and six range mm -hmm. when I know I had a lot of fat on my body. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're at a, they stay at a 1.2 and a 2. Okay. And even when I break my fast, I do it with, like, the bone broth and not, you know, introducing, like, really heavy foods into my diet. But I'm at a complete stall. If I, when I do do my, you know, go back to eating, I'll start gaining weight. So I don't know how to get, I, I just need 20 more pounds to lose. I want to get down to 135. I'm almost 5'7". So that's a really comfortable weight. But I just bought my first pair of skinny jeans, so I know <laughs> the inches are going away. <laughs> right? I love skinny jeans. jeans. But yeah, I don't know sweet. Mine to too. It, how to get this last 20 pounds off of me. It's just stubborn. And I'm on to, I've, I've done no cheating. I've done your, um, I've got your, um, inner, the, the yeast. I've got your electrolytes, I've got the wheatgrass, I've got your D3, um, DK, I've got all of your products, and mm -hmm. they really help, but mm -hmm. I don't know why I can't get this last 20 pounds off of me. Okay, so um, question, do you notice, uh, are things gradually coming in with your size of your body? I know the weight, but let's put the weight to the side. As far as your size, right. your, your waist and your clothes, are they, you finding they're starting to loosen up a little bit? Yes. Yeah. I've gotten really skinny at the top. It's just the extra, because I was so big, I was an apple shape. My, my stomach, there's a lot of loose skin. Okay. I don't know if that's contributing to that. I'm actually having to have facial surgery because my face is melting into my neck. I'm 55. Mm -hmm. And um, the doctor said that it's because I've lost so much weight that even my pimples are hollow. Because so, I lost it so fast. Are you exercising? So I, no. Okay. I'm not doing any exercise. All right. So here's a couple tips. Um, you ready for this? Are you sitting down? Yes. Do you have a pen and paper? <laughs> okay, good. Um, you've done great. You're doing the extreme keto. Uh, it's called keto on steroids from that video on that. Um, your ketones were 5 to 6, which is pretty hardcore, and that's fine. But now they're down to 1.2, which just means you're more efficient. Your body's using those ketones, and it's like burning them. It doesn't mean you're less in ketosis. It just means that you're more efficient burning them. Um, now, the fact that your blood sugar's a little high tells me you had a pre-existing problem, which is going to take more time. But I think what your body's doing now, it's in a healing mode, and you are burning fat, obviously, but you're, um, 
you're probably growing a little bit of muscle too because your body's healing and sometimes it doesn't just your body doesn't just go after weight loss. If you take a look at like what's happening inside the body when you get healthy, the whole structure of your cells are improving. So you're getting more protein, you're getting you're healing, and your body's not necessarily always just gonna burn fat. Uh, I mean just like just melt the fat off. The other thing that you want to plug in now is exercise because that's what's missing, especially if you have loose skin or like the skin right through here. You want to aggressively do a full body type exercise and the reason for that is you're going to spike growth hormone um, and growth hormone is the anti-aging hormone and it's going to help your skin, your collagen, your loose skin and um, you want to do a high intensity, low duration and then do that periodically. Like just make sure you don't overtrain. But that's what you're missing is the exercise piece of the puzzle. And that will, uh, that'll, that's the icing on the cake. And um, no, I shouldn't talk about cake. Sugar icing. Yeah. But that's what you want to do. And um, I think I would just, um, I mean, you're doing everything else correct. I think it's working, but you can always, um, the video I did on, the keto and steroids, I do recommend some nuts on there. Maybe you cut out nuts and you just do more of a carnivore right now and see if that doesn't, you know, tweak, tweak things. Thanks, Michelle. All right, now we're gonna go to Michael from Cincinnati. Are you there, Mike? I'm here, can you hear me? Yeah, how you doing? Hey, Dr. Burge, um, to your wife Karen and Tim. I started um, finding you on YouTube about three months ago. Started at 380. Now I'm at 312. 380 to so, 312. Congratulations. Woo! Yeah. Man, and I really, um, I'm a, you know, ex-sugar addicted person with Coca-Cola, all the, all the bad stuff. But what? I like long-term fasting. Okay. Um, really after the third or fourth day, I can really just go into some deep, deep stuff. But the thing that makes me, I, I did like 19 days. Mm -hmm. And I want to go on a, do a 30 day starting this coming Monday. Okay. But okay. that white tongue, that taste in your mouth, mm -hmm. it kicked me out of doing the long term. I, I can't bear anymore, you know, so Aww. what can I do to get rid of that taste, that frothy, thick taste in my mouth doing yeah. um, long term fasting? I did um, order the wheat grass juice powder, hadn't come yet. Um, I want to take that during a long term fast. Hopefully it won't kick me out of um, ketosis. No, it's going it to... The wheatgrass juice powder is going to purify and deodorize your body. And I think you're going through autophagy. Your body's probably getting rid of some extra yeast or candida. So, but the best thing for that, do you want to know the absolute best remedy for that? What's that? Garlic. Garlic is the most powerful antifungal, anti-candida thing on the planet, probably in the universe. So, uh, the entire universe. Yes. Huge universe. All yeah. the yeah. planet. How do I do that? How do you, a long-term fast. What do I do? You you probably want to take it in the pill form. Pill, okay. Yeah, and then do you have it on your website? Do you sell no, it? No, I don't sell it, but you can just find a high-quality source and then periodically take it through the day. That will purify the inside of your body and that will speed things up. I think this problem will go away though uh, over time because you're you're going through autophagy right now, and your body mm -hmm. is in a cleaning mode. It's like a self-cleaning oven but it does take mm -hmm. some time for that. But the garlic is going to be the best bet. Um, yeah, do that. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Bird. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I'm cleaning my oven. Bye-bye. Your actual oven? I'm cleaning my oven right now. What a coincidence, Karen. Hey, we didn't talk about, about later in the show, but later in the show now is 60 seconds. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, I missed something. What do you so mean? So usually during the show we say, hey, coming up later in the show. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, one, I didn't prepare those, some really... Quiz, okay, so I'll, 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 okay, so I'll talk about something just later in the show. Um, I actually... It is later in the show. I want to talk about the damage from alcohol it doesn't come from the actual alcohol. I don't know, that's a I'm tip. I just it. came in my mind. What does it so when you from? drink, guys, um, the damage doesn't come from the alcohol. It, it comes, comes from, from the, the side insulin. effect. It, no, no, oh. it doesn't actually. It comes from the byproduct. There's an enzyme in your liver that breaks down the alcohol and it gives this byproduct, this little extra thing. That's highly toxic. Well, that's, how, do you, how do you get rid of that? That's in another video, Karen. PD cure. You have to, what's that? PD cure. Exactly. <laughs> they say. That's right. Um, what you could do, what neutralizes this, this, this thing, Karen, if yeah. you really want to know, 
yeah. is, and this will also prevent a hangover. Not that any of you would want to do that, but um, B1 and a little bit of water will handle it. B1 neutralizes B1, the toxins. That, so that's your n nutritional yeast or what? Well, there's another product that I would recommend. It's, it's called Mitochondrial Energy. It's a pretty cool product. It's just a good product because it's a natural B1, and you can take it. it um, I mainly uh, developed it to prevent hangovers. No, I did not. <laughs> but you can use it for that. But you, it's, B1 is, like, so important. D watch the video on that. Okay. Watch the video. So, hi, producers. Hi. <laughs> They're all waving at us right now. Well, hey. I think this is a great way to start the new year. Yep, and listen guys, what we're going to do now, um, we're going to end off, and I'm going to start another video. It's going to be Without on Facebook me. in the lab, right? We're going to do, we're going to do a dual video on the lab, live, and then recorded that we're going to edit with Tim Payne, who's basically a true hero. Half a um, hero. And a, and a man. Half a, and a, <laughs> half a hero. <laughs> oh look, this guy oh is hilarious. God. And he is a oh super God. athlete, so. Massive. Get a lot of Gold athlete medals. questions. I'm sure you weren't yeah. always an athlete, right? Of course I was. I was a paratrooper. Hello. Oh my God. Hello. Yeah, we jump behind crazy. enemy lines. Crazy. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Jesus. You know, we just go to work in the morning. You know, this guy. Wow. I think, I don't know. I know we're supposed to cut now, but I think most people don't even consider or fathom what a huge portion of our population in, in the armed services are doing every single day. That's insane. Thank you. It was wow. an appreciate. It's not a job, it's an adventure. It's an adventure. <laughs> you see, if I talk too much about it, I would start probably leaking. So we're going to end off now. All right, and, guys. Um, Have a wonderful weekend. Wave. We do the wave. We'll see you next, do the wave. next week. <laughs>